it's actually up. Apparently, that's our sign that, that we're actually up. Me, yeah, that was it telling me that it was actually up. Okay, so the topic today is can you prep when you're living in a tiny space? And I have actual notes today because I didn't want to forget anything. Um, I'm going to go over, so I will try to take part in the chat. Can you prep when you're living oh, in a tiny space? I always forget to turn it off. Notes. So if you can see all the tin behind us, I have finished off as much of the downstairs in the tiny house as I possibly can with the materials that I have on hand while we wait to have better materials. Um, I didn't want the fiberglass to be exposed. We wanted to keep it from being damaged by kids, but also we didn't want the fiberglass in the air. So that's the shininess all around me is tin that came off of John's dad's calf shed, the blue down in the wind two years ago. Um, Larry family is, why do I, I know how to say your name. It's Larry family homestead. Um, and Susan is here. Susan, I did get your package sent yesterday. Hopefully you got the, um, the tracking number. Mr. Dirt is here. Ivan is here. Tammy is here. All right. So last night, well, first off, we live in Idaho and because we live in Idaho, we can have temperatures up into the 90s. We've, we have had temperatures in the hundreds before, but it doesn't happen very often. And we have temperatures down in the negative 40s. It, it, that doesn't happen very often. Usually it's somewhere between negative 20 and negative 30 Fahrenheit. And so we have huge temperature swings. And we can have those temperature swings in the summer. It can be freezing in the summer. And then it can be 80 or 90 degrees during the day. So freezing at night, 90, 90 degrees in the day. Because of that, we're struggling with the size of our home in that one night we're throwing the covers off because we're too hot. And then the next night we need, no joke, we've had eight blankets on our bed before, two underneath us, six on top of us, and we were still a little bit cold. And so... Um, Oh, Yanasa Ama Ranch made it. Okay, so they're a new channel. I absolutely love them. They they haven't been around very long, but they are amazing. They're killing it with the thumbnails and their titles, and their editing is amazing, and they have really good content. So go check them out for sure. Um, let's see. So hopefully, can you see? Am I moving? Am, are you getting any kind of, are you actually watching I am actually, my show? Okay. <laughs> This is what mine is showing. Is I just banner. wanted to know if Mine's it was showing the banner in the chat, but if yours, that's the window that's showing yeah. up on the computer. So you're doing good. So it's actually showing. Well, yes. You're watching. Yours. Mine is like not. I'm watching the chat. Oh well, don't watch the chat. Watch the video. Why? Because then I know if people can actually see that I'm talking. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay, so Avon Leanne can only come in and say hi, but she's heading back out. Thank you for popping in. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. So we have this tiny little house with these huge temperature swings, and I'm also a prepper and a homesteader. Now, any of you that homestead, you know that you have certain tools that you need in order to process your own food. Um, you can have canning jars, you have pressure canner, you have a hot pack canner, you have a dehydrator. And when you're living in less than 400 square feet, where do you put those things? Where do you put them? We aren't even going to talk about whether or not you have electricity, but just storing objects can be an interesting feat. Um, Tools for building that 400 square feet. And yeah. Where do you store them? Any, any kind of tool. And so what there is room for in a tiny house is pretty much what you use on a day-to-day -day basis. And so where do you put your snow pants when it's summer? Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. For us, it's been blankets lately, but I am seeing that I would like to be doing some canning. I am trying to live as budget-friendly as possible. John is about to head off to go to school in Oklahoma. And so our income will be split between two different places. And the more that I can save, the more that we are certain that we won't have any uh, student loans or student debt when he's finished. And so I keep thinking, well, I want to can beans and I would like to uh, build a breakfast nook that I can put like five gallon buckets of dry goods into. 
but it definitely won't I mean our storage room that we had our food storage in before was as big as our house is now it because we had it in different rooms um, and so one thing that I have found is that we spend a lot of time outdoors when we have a tiny house we sleep in it we cook in it we might relax in it a little bit but most of our time is spent outside and I really think that tiny house living if you have a larger family like if it was just one person a single person who has friends over occasionally I don't think you need that much space outside but if you're living in a tiny house and you have a family and you have dogs that kind of thing I really think you need some acreage and the other reason I think that is because if you could build a little shed to store off-season things in I think that would that would solve a lot of your problems because a lot of food storage especially dry goods could be stored in an uninsulated unheated building it doesn't necessarily need to stay at at the same temperature um, little mountain ranch is here hello hello um, so before I forget we do have some things for decorating the tiny house that we have been sent by our viewers and I do not want to forget them and Little Mountain Ranch reminded me of that so Little Mountain Ranch is like the homestead version of North and South she has a lot of kids and she gets a lot done in a day and I want to open these up so we're doing a little bit of an unboxing in the middle of this and then we're gonna get back to the food storage um, first is from Brenda and I want to make sure I say her channel right. It is Homesteading the Pioneer Way channel. And I do have her link below, so go check her out. Homesteading the Pioneer Way. Um, and I looked at this, but I didn't have it up in the house yet because I wanted to show you guys. And this one, I think is this called I think it's called White Work. And I don't know how well you can see it. It says DPH on it. Isn't that pretty? I don't know if you can see the white work on it or not. It's, it's upside down. Right yeah. here, DPH. And then a little bit of work at the top. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. So that is super exciting. So I have her link below. Homesteading the Pioneer Way. So go check her out. And then the next one after that was Laurie Family Homestead, and this was quite the package. And I did open them to make sure there wasn't a human head in them or anything. I have a tendency to like to do that off camera, just because sometimes my reactions on camera are startled. Easily startled when I'm on a live show, right? Oh, it's in a positive way. I don't know if it's in a positive way. No, no, okay. I love these. If you guys have never seen these, these are like a survival bracelet. Part. and if you ever need cordage you take the bracelet apart and I, I absolutely love having these and unfortunately all mine have been taken apart because I always need cordage so that's from Larry Family Homestead and their link is also in the description below their channel is about tiny houses and cooking and carpentry skills and so you should go check them out let's see what else we have oh this is beautiful I love this kind of thing. Isn't that pretty? I love these colors. And it's so soft. Look at that. <laughs> Sandra Clark says, as long as the packages aren't ticking, I'll open them. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had anything scary sent to me. But it does always make me nervous, though. So, oh, this is so pretty. So I will wear these. Honestly, it's really sad that we, June, almost July, we have enough weather that I could actually, um, I could actually wear these and have a reason to wear them. It's not pretty. There we go. That is an Idaho summer for you. What do you think? Pretty. Yes. It's beautiful. It's your colors. Those are phenomenal. So thank you, Laurie Family Homestead. I will cherish those. Okay. So. Little Mountain Ranch is so cute. Aren't they cute? Okay. Yes. Little Mountain Ranch is next. And I looked at these and I squealed a little bit because it was a bigger package. And I was just really, really curious. 
Oh, real quick. LaShonda Hudson said, "It's mi all it's missing is a little brown. No. Everything she owns is I brown. I love brown. We can get away from brown. And oh, I'm gray. so excited. I am so excited. Now, Little Mountain Ranch, um, their house is this beautiful, beautiful cabin. And it looks like roundwood. I don't know if it's actually roundwood because I know sometimes you can uh, make it look like it's actual roundwood. But it looks like roundwood. And it's a beautiful house. And they have a beautiful homestead. And this just makes me so excited. Look at that. I will have to hold it up for half a second before I can see if you guys can actually see it. Can you see it? It'll be another 20 seconds. It'll be 20 seconds before you can see it, and I can actually tell. So you're going to have to put. Oh my gosh. Can you see how much work that went? She actually put my logo in there. I am so excited to put that up. You outdid yourself. I don't know how you did that so quickly. That is beautiful. Danny is asking how we get the Wi-Fi to work with all the metal around. Um, so we hotspot no our cell phones above the metal, and that probably is making a nice dish effect yeah, so, to amplify because we're getting really good Wi-Fi. Yeah, right we're now. getting <laughs> good Wi-Fi right now. Okay, so those three channels go check out Homesteading the Pioneer Way, Laurie Family Homestead, and Little Mountain Ranch. They're in the descriptions below. They're great channels. And um, I shouldn't have put that hat on because now my hair is totally messed up for the rest of the broadcast. Um, one last thing I wanted to talk about before we went any further. Usually in my 72-hour kit in my car, I carry a baby wrap. When my kids were under the age of um, about seven, I wanted to have a baby wrap because if one of my kids ever got hurt, I wanted to be able to still carry them. And with these, you can actually carry quite a large child. So this is a baby wrap. I think I paid just under $100 for it. And um, it's made out of... I think it's micro suede or something. And so if anybody out there needs a, a baby carrier, I don't want to send this to DI because it is exceptionally nice. But if you need one, um, email me at dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. So hopefully, I, I love the abundance of what you guys have sent me. And um, if anybody out there needs something, I would love to send it on too. Okay, so back to prepping and homesteading and any of you that have and and prepping homesteading and not having enough space sometimes you can live in a spacious home but because you have a large family or because of the projects you're working on it's just not big enough and I think there does get to a point where you really can't downsize any further not reasonably not reasonably and not and not saving money I mean the whole point of homesteading and being a prepper is to save money to live your life to the fullest to enjoy your family and um, I feel like we've kind of come to that point. I think we have somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 20 boxes in storage right now, about 20 boxes. And everything that's left out there is minimal canning supplies, um, my butter churn, some fabric, uh, winter gear, clothes, some books. Preservation and fermenting and charcuterie items. Yeah, lots of books. And so, but I do feel like we've got to the point where, hmm, maybe we really have hit our limit. We haven't used up all of our space here in the tiny house. It isn't all used up. I have quite a few things that I still need to build in. I want to build in the storage nook that's really a breakfast nook for us to eat in, in the kitchen. We need to bring our wood stove in. And I would like to build a, some kind of storage system here in the living room so that I can close things in. I do not like this cupboard in the back because it's laundry and clothing and blankets and I would like that to be closed in so that it feels tidier. So I still need to build something like that. But I feel a little bit like I've hit an impasse. I feel like what honey? You're doing great. I feel like we don't have enough storage. It, you know, if it was always going to be summer, the seasons never changed and we could grow a garden all year long so we wouldn't necessarily need the canning so much. I think this would totally work. But it's not that I'm repenting my thoughts of tiny living cozy here. Um, I think we're having fun. It's glamping at its best. We don't have power. We just have an extension cord that we plug our, our cell phones and that kind of thing into. Um, what are your thoughts? No, there's no disagreement. You, you said you've reached and uh, finally reached a point, and I'm like, finally. <laughs> but, uh, I I love tiny house living. I don't know if I love tiny house living 
at this small of a size? Well, practically, it, it, it's not practical in the point in life where we are right now, is what you're saying. Maybe. I don't know if it ever would be. I, I really, right now, I'm really feeling the fact that I don't have my pressure canner. I'm, I'm feeling that. I'm watching Danny and Wanda over at Deep South Homestead, and they're doing all this canning right now, and I'm thinking of their pantry, and I'm looking at how much we're spending on groceries just because... We don't have a lot of storage space to store food storage right now. It's not that big of a deal to cook. We have the, the camp cooker. Essential Mountain just showed up. Where are they? Yeah, hey, Essential yeah. Mountain made it. Looks like it's <laughs> okay. So Essential Mountain Home said they're up in the mountains, and they are in a cabin only slightly bigger than ours, but they have seven kids that will be in it this summer. And so they have a lot going on space-wise too. They've done a really, really cute job with their property up there and their projects are awesome. I, When we've talked, it, it has been an issue of where do we put everything? How do we make everybody comfortable? And sometimes the physical strain of trying trying to stretch your resources while trying to conserve your resources like you don't want to have a bunch of junk around that you don't need because you don't want to have to clean up after it and you don't want to have to store it but at the same time it's really nice not to have to go out and buy blankets because you got rid of them all because you, you thought you didn't need them progressive homemaker is asking what would you be canning and do you have excess produce i like to can beans um, what else do we like to can? I like to can applesauce, and then I take the applesauce later, and I will turn it into fruit leather if we don't get through it all fast enough. We like to make apple butter, pear butter. I like to dehydrate more than I like to can, but I I do really like having the simplicity of having canned something and being able just to warm it back up instead of having to soak my beans overnight and then cook them. Um, we use our pressure cooker a lot, which is not a pressure canner. I mean, they're the same instrument, but it's smaller and it's meant for cooking, not canning. I use the pressure cooker a lot, so it speeds up meal preparation. But we're going to the grocery store more than we have in our whole marriage because we've had food storage and we've had animals our whole marriage. Um, we still have the goats for goat's milk. We've been making cheese. We've been drinking the goat's milk. Um, we don't have chickens right now. We have had a really hard time finding egg laying anything. Our, our renters have them, but they have enough just for their family. And so I'm feeling food poor right now, which I, I think it's healthy every once in a while for, as a homesteader to go away from the homestead and remember how expensive it is to eat out in that world and that the food is not as wonderful as what you're creating at home. I think that's really a very healthy thing to do for us. It was really eye-opening when we went on our trip to be like, we're used to eating this gourmet food. We're eating roast duckling. We're eating lamb, pasture-raised lamb. We're eating quail. We're eating rabbit. We're eating fish that's that was caught a mile from our house. We were used to eating all those things just from the sweat of our own hands. brow. Hands. Well, my hands don't sweat very much. Hands. Oh, ha oh, yeah. Okay. We we were raising our own our own hams or our own pigs and uh, processing them in our smokehouse. So we were used to eating like that. And then we went on the road. And even the really expensive restaurants that we went to occasionally just because it felt like culturally we needed to experience a state in, in its own food and we'd go to an expensive restaurant, it never measured up to what we could grow at home that we were used to having every night for dinner. Um, yeah. You know, some... But Yanasa Ama Ranch said, ah, oh, we are working on a chicken coop tractor thingy right now. And I don't have mine built yet. We decided when Willow Creek Homestead came up, we built the outdoor shower instead of the chicken coop. And so now even if I could find chickens, I couldn't put in chickens because I don't have a chicken coop. Um, but yeah, Yanasana, Yanasa Ama Ranch. I really, they're one of my new favorite channels. Make sure to go check them out. Um, Progressive Homemaker said, is it more cost effective to buy produce and then can it instead of just buying canned foods? Um, I don't think so. I The thing I don't like about canned foods is that you throw the, the can away. Uh, you pay to have garbage removed if you can't find a way to use it. And so for me, one of the things I really like about canning my own food is that I get to keep my jars, to use them again, 
and I'm not taking up space in the landfill and I'm not having to pay for garbage removal, which is kind of a big deal. Um, Sandra Clark said, I stock up on canned tomatoes and chickpeas when they go on sale. Subdriver said, well, there is where you sleep, comfy for chickens. I can't put my chickens in my loft. That would be disgusting. Um, so do any of you have thoughts on, because I, I really am stumped. Right now, I feel like I'm a little at a little bit of an impasse because I got the tin put up, and I'm looking around and seeing that there's other things that I could get put up. And there's so many things I could do right now, I can't seem to pick one. We have the shower up well enough that we can use it, but I still need to trim tin off. I need to reinforce the walls. I need to make it look nice. Willow Creek Homestead came up and built it with us, and it looked nice when they left, but when I finished it up, it doesn't look that nice. And so I need to not disrespect the work that they came, and so I need to finish it so it looks nice before I show it to you guys. So I need to pretty that up. But we have family reunions coming up, and we're, we've been out of town a little bit again. It happens. It seems like we're out of town every week. And every time I leave, it feels like projects get pushed further back, and I can see that um, I'm kind of start and go, start and go, start and go, start and go. And so it feels like nothing gets finished. Um, Lisa Harris is asking, what made you want to live in a tiny house? What me um, when I was 22, I was really, really, really sick, and I had to move back in with my parents, and I didn't like that. I really wanted to play house on my own. I didn't, I didn't want to live in town, and I didn't want to have to leave the country in order to be able to make a living. I was working as a teacher's aide or what is it, Title One. I. I was teaching kids how to read in the local school system, so I had a check. I had money, I didn't have very much, and I was my parents were also paying me to, to do work around their property so that I could be out on the sunshine and get better. And what I really just really wanted was a tiny little bungalow that I could call my own, that I could decorate, that I could put screws in the walls and just do whatever I wanted to do with it and have a little goat in the yard. And my parents had enough property that I could have done that, but I kind of I kind of chickened out and decided not to do it. I felt like I didn't have enough knowledge and I would have needed a lot of help from my dad and he he thought I was a little bit crazy to want to do it in the first place and so I wasn't as gutsy back then as I am now. It's a thought like past tense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't as gutsy back then as I am now to where I'm just like, well, I'm going to find a way and I'm going to do it. For one thing, I, I think at one point I, I understood why my dad didn't want me to do that on the property was he wanted his property to stay looking nice. And what I really wanted was a learning experience to learn how to build a little house and to do it well. And my learning curve, I understand that it wouldn't have been pretty. And so I've always held that as wanting something that I owned outright, not have a mortgage on it, make it cute, it my very own, and not have anybody else tell me how to do it. So that's why I want to live in a tiny house. I feel like with the tiny house, I can learn the basics of how to build one, how to furnish one, how to finish the inside, how to live in it, see if we want to live in it. And then I feel like I kind of can close that chapter of my life and move on. If tiny house living isn't for us, then this will have been the time to learn it and say, no, I think a slightly bigger house, I don't mind a small mortgage or let's find a way to not have a mortgage but have a slightly bigger house. I, I feel like it's kind of like purging it out of my system to actually to actually do it. That, does that sound about right? Sure. <laughs> Josh and Kim are saying, that's probably Josh. He says he loves the metal on the wall. Thank you. I think that's sarcasm. I'm pretty darn sure that's so? sarcasm. Oh, well, I figured we were just building a Faraday. Anything coming out of Josh's mouth is sarcasm. I um, figured it was building a great Faraday cage, and we can keep all the world and all the beta rays out. Dietrich Enke said, your friends over at Essential Mountain Homesteading could help. Did the root cellar. By the way, I'm enjoying Essential Mountain Homestead vouches and your channel. I'm so glad you're enjoying that. Well, the problem with Essential Mountain Homestead is there's only one of him. And <laughs> between his homestead and my homestead, there is not enough time. And we have had to transfer him back to his own homestead because he is putting in 
um, wells and he is getting houses ready for his family and pouring concrete and still working a full time job up there. And so. You were talking about having a tiny house living purged from your system, and Yanasa Ama comes back. Is it purged from your system yet? So. <laughs> Not yet. Um, not yet. I, for one thing, I'm really enjoying just kind of building things right now, and I want to see how well I can do it. I want to see if my kitchen turns out super cute. I want to know how to build furniture by the time I'm done with this project, and um, because after this, I want to be able to build barns for my animals. If we wanted to build our own home, I'd, I'd like to understand some of the basics of doing that, and I'm not finished with this one. I, I, it might be purged out of my system by the time we leave this one but I think as a glamping summer living place this is super fun and I think once we get our wood burning stove in it it's going to be fun in the winter too but that's just my take on it because I like winter um, I'm not an all year round summer kind of girl um, let's see Eric Erica S said why don't you use your RV for cooking and storage um, we were in an RV for cooking, but it was when we were borrowing, and it was really hard to keep bo both. Sorry, I've got an eyelash in my eye. It was really hard to keep both spaces clean and tidy when you've got little kids running in and out in your homeschooling. It's much easier just to have everything in one space rather than being spread out and having. We already have a storage space at John's parents. If I then add an RV into the situation. Everything is so spread out. I can't find anything. Nothing's where it belongs. And so it's just easier just to be in here while we finish it. Um, let's see. Progressive Homemaker said, I live in rural West North Carolina. Yeah, that's right. Is that how, you, how that works? And folks here in Appalachia had separate buildings for canning where they would can and then store the food. Maybe you need supplemental outbuildings. Yes, I think that's very true. If you're going to live in a tiny house and, and be primitive it's a really good it's like with um off grid with doug and stacy if you want to see a great uh out kitchen or summer kitchen go see what they've done and they have it screened in so that they can also sleep out there if they want to in the in the heat of the summer um we should do that although our heat of the summer still gets chilly in the hey morning. the simple life made it yeah hello are, are you dying of the heat yet um hey k doodle so what else was there? Um, okay. I think I think it would be nice to have a root cellar. That would be awesome. I think it would be nice to have a summer kitchen. That would be awesome too. But in the end, I'm kind of thinking, why not just build a bigger house? You know what I mean? Um, Laurie Family Homes had said, you do need outbuildings if you live tiny. I, I really think that's starting to come home to us because you have a lot of money invested in your tools you have a lot of money invested in the food that you purchase so that you have some food storage. And um, it's not that we didn't foresee this. It's just that until you've lived in the situation, you, you really don't know until you've lived in the situation. So if you're going to live tiny, I do suggest that people go out and live in these tiny houses that they have an Airbnb and don't just go take tours, go stay in them. There's a little village in Colorado in what's the name of the town? It's, Lions. Lions. L Y O N S. Yeah. Lions. North, and and North it's Wicasa. It's northwest of Denver. It's yeah. actually not that far out of town. So. Yeah, it's it's Wicasa in Colorado and in Lions, Colorado, and it's a whole village of tiny houses that you can rent and stay in. I think it's a thousand dollars rent for one month. Is that right? I think that's what it was. Maybe. I think that's what it was. A lot of hippies around. Um but it it was it was Why would you say that? <laughs> no, I'm, I don't mean it in a bad way. I just, if the homesteader crowd and the tiny house well, crowd. As long as you don't take your pig and try to keep it in the kitchen, I right, think we'll be fine. But I'm just, oh, gosh. So I'm just telling you, homesteaders, if you do this, beware, you're mixing old school, new school. Um, Flying VS Farms, where are you? Laurie Family Homestead. They're in Florida, but they're about to come towards us just as we're going towards them. It's horrible. We want to meet up with Lori Family Homestead. They have their tiny house that they're building themselves, but they're going to end up in Idaho, and we're going closer towards Florida by being in Oklahoma. We can't. We're going to have to stop somewhere in the middle and do videos. Um, let's see. Lori Family Homestead said there is a great village in College Park, Florida, Florida to rent tiny houses. See, I would 
you know, if you're going to plan a vacation, plan it around staying somewhere like that and take your family and, and stay in it and see if it's because tiny houses are not cheap. Ours was 70,000 just to buy the shell. That doesn't include fixing any of it. Really, these pre-made ones are somewhere between 40 and like 120,000. There's probably some that are more expensive than 120,000. So it's not a small expenditure that you're making. And so I, I would recommend staying in one. Is that your mom? No, I'm saying I'm not sure if he meant this or if it was a Freudian slip or not. He says, I do not like living in a tinny home. Is that a knock on our walls? <laughs> I told you he's sarcastic. Yeah. Oh, I know he's sarcastic. I think he's funny. He is funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Essential Mountain Homesteading and I were talking earlier today, and we are talking about living off-grid. They still don't have their well in. And they're still working on their septic, and they've got five kids that they're doing this off-grid type situation with, and they're living in a little RV. And we were talking about the physical strain that comes with living in a situation that doesn't quite have enough room, that you don't have running water, that you don't have readily available electricity, and what it does to you physically and mentally. And um, I think Josh, again, Essential Mountain Homesteading, I think Josh is going to do a video of it here in a little bit, talking about the physical drain that is real about he's still holding down a full-time job and taking care of kids and his wife Kim is taking care of these kids when he's not there without the regular amenities and in a very tiny space and um, I think it's a very much more purposeful way of living you're very aware of your surroundings you try to go to bed with the Sun because it feels right the light the Sun is coming in through the windows it's starting to get dark it's just time to go to bed it feels very intentional but the switch from living a very modern life where you don't pay attention to natural ryth rhythms of weather, the switch can be startlingly difficult physically and emotionally. Um, Susan Ballou said, there is a tiny house community in Quebec, Canada. So for any of you Canadians, there would be a good place to go. Do you know what it's called, Susan? <laughs> Ricky Ricardo said run on black diesel would that be coffee is that no, what he's no, referring he's, to no, there's a, a way to make what's called black diesel really a gallon. yeah and what well, what was the topic they were talking about I'm not sure that I found but but um, I think it was talking about running a generator so we could have lights and be Larry well, family Larry family homestead said if you make it yourself you can do it for about 20 to 25 thousand still expensive for the size yes the Larry family homestead they are making a movable tiny house so if you want to know how to build a tiny house go to their channel the process of finishing it getting ready to go cross country from Florida to Idaho and um, but yeah it's a lot of money to put into something that small you could just do an RV and do it for a fraction of that cost however with an RV, you have very thin walls. It's not as stable. It won't last as long. It won't be beautiful for as long because it's not really made out of wood. Um, it's made out of plastic. Um, so, <laughs> Josh, Essential Mountain Home Steady said the mental and emotional abuse is real. Is that what he said? Hard, yeah. It is truly mental and emotional <laughs> uh, difficulties. I know where you live, Josh. Stop making fun of my walls. <laughs> um, or she's going to have a mental breakdown. <laughs> um, let's see. Susan Sullivan said, our two acres in Texas were 5000 Yeah, you can find places. I, I think that plunking a tiny house down somewhere on some land is... For me, it sounds wonderful because it helps you kind of leave the baggage behind. If you came from a really big house, if you had a lot of debt, if you can sell your debt and get rid of it and do something in a tinier space. I think tiny houses are more sustainable than RVs just because they, they have better insulation, they last longer. Um, and then you can use it for a granny cabin or you can rent it out in Airbnb later if you build a bigger house. Um, I just, for me, it just feels like a really great way to shed garbage both emotional and spiritual and physical and to be very purposeful in an in a new in a new chapter of your life uh, <laughs> Josh says essential homesteading says he's running on yellow diesel I think that's a rock star Are you correct it was yellow jet fuel but yellow jet fuel the diesel wars 
Um, Susan Sullivan said we planned by half to one acre in Tennessee. We thought Tennessee sounded beautiful. Yes. Did we go through Tennessee? We, we did didn't go through it. Tennessee. We were just shy of the Tennessee line by like 15 minutes. And still need to get back there. Um, okay, Flying VS Farm said they bought their homestead 40 years ago. They have a beautiful homestead in California that they go to. That's Rebecca, Flying VS Farms. Um, Susan B Below, I, I don't know if I'm saying right, said min, min, minialist, minialist, okay, shut up, minialist in Quebec. If we both say it, then both of our incorrect pronunciations run together right. in Quebec. Then it might, two wrongs might make them right. <laughs> okay, I'm totally losing it. Ah! Uh, okay, wait. Larry Family Homes had said, Susan Sullivan, we used to have a four-season RV. It was nice. We liked the high ceilings in a tiny house. Progressive Homemaker said, are you guys debt-free? Unfortunately, right now, we are not. Um, when we left on our trip, the only thing we owed on was our house. What happened was is that we got halfway through our trip and our RV broke down and rather than trying to fix a 40 year old rv instead we transitioned into our minivan so we do owe some money on the minivan and we owe a little bit of money on our shed so we have a mortgage we have a little bit of a car payment and a little bit of a shed payment but all, before all rolled into one all rolled into one but we have renters that are paying for our mortgage and um we're hoping to be able to turn the shed into an airbnb and so hopefully it will be able to pay itself off very quickly. Um, LJ White said, our, oh, why does it keep moving? LJ White <laughs> said, <laughs> our area is making it harder for people Stop to be self-sufficient. <laughs> our area is making it harder for people to be self-sufficient. Only allowed five chickens, no roasters. Unless your plot is over two acres, no burning or rain collection allowed. We are moving. See, and that's one of the things we're really struggling with here is that we had to get a permit just to sh put our shed down. And the county might come out and say, no, you're not allowed to live in it, even though we don't have it set up to septic. We don't have it set up to elect electricity. Um, we could live totally off grid in here and be totally comfortable as long as our wood stove was here. But the county might still come out and tell us we can't do it, which to my mind is completely unfounded. You can live in a tent. Why can't you live in a shed? Which is why we're living in a tent. Which is why we're living in a tent. Um, okay. Uh, Danny Ball said, I don't know if it is because of the metal, but the sound is a bit tinny. <laughs> no, that's because All you funny wiseacres. It's the corrugation in the metal. It's making a perfect sound chamber. Um, okay, so Susan Sullivan said Baloo pronounced Baloo. Or Baloo? Is it Baloo? Baloo. Okay, Susan Baloo said Baloo. <laughs> Sandra Clark, it is on the border of Quebec, New Brunswick, and the U.S. Or B, capital B, capital A, period, capital L, capital U, capital E, and that's supposed to be the tiny homestead community, or the tiny house community in Quebec. Um, Laurie Family Homestead said, still not bad debt, oh, where did it go? Still not bad debt for the average person today. Well, and... When we've done Agreed. prepping, we've done this before where we'll go out and get these amazing tools and everything, and then we'll pay it off really, really, really quickly, but it still makes me feel like a crazy person. Before we went on our trip, we had all this savings, <laughs> you know, and then we went on the trip, and it was a great experience, and the channel grew, and it went from being a hobby to being our livelihood, and so we did have to invest some money into it, but um, we do like to, we really prefer to be 100% out of debt, and... We work really hard. We're actually pretty good at it. We, you know, we've paid off student loans 100%. We paid off car loans 100%. We paid for all surgeries with cash. And then we got onto a homestead and started paying for our own food. And I, to my mind, because we had the big house and we had the big property, instead of having a small house and a small property that were easy to maintain and create lush vegetation in, instead we stretched ourselves too thin by having too much property and too big of a house. Um, Josh says he loves our tent. It's a beautiful <laughs> tent. And I love your RV, Josh. I love your RV. Um, let's see. Progressive Homemaker said, are you moving to Oklahoma? We are going to Oklahoma to go to school for, I don't know how temporary or how permanent that will be, but uh, the school in Tulsa is the one that John wanted to go to. He felt called to it, and we loved the Tulsa area. And so... Um, 
anyway, that's those are kind of our for the next two year plans is for John to be in school because as great as YouTube is, it is hard to have people tell you they hate you every day and it wears on you. And and if you're a YouTuber, it, a lot of that comes your way and it, it it's not something that I feel is a long term. Um. Our time here is limited, folks. Where? No, that's kind of what it sounds like you're saying. Our time here in Idaho? Our time here with the YouTube. Our time here with the YouTube. I, I love YouTubing. I just don't like to make quite as many daily videos. Um, Erica S., are you in Tulsa for two years? It, it sounds be, like it. could be as little as nine months, depending on what happens after that nine-month. Well, and for the wife and kids, it could be as low as six months. Dietrich Enke said, check out Tahlequa while you're in Oklahoma. Is that Tahlequah. a city? Tahlequah? Mm -hmm. Did we did we go there? I think we went through. Because we if we stopped, we'd vapor lock. So we had to rush yeah, That's right. That was before. awful. Ascension Mountain Homestead said, please don't leave. Mm -hmm. oh, well, gosh, you'll, get, you'll be snowed in for months at a time. Anyway. <laughs> you'll have to come you'll see never, us in Oklahoma. You'll never get down to see us here. So you may as well just. You yeah. should go on a road trip, like retrofit one of those big buses or something and come see <laughs> right? us. Um, Sandra Clark said, um, or no, she wasn't talking to me. Cherokee Capital. Interesting. Okay. Does, is somebody trying to get a hold of me? Only page. Exciting visual. Don't let me forget I need to work to or I need to milk tonight. Okay. Okay. So um Susan said rent it out, Sandra Clark. Well, in order to be able to, to travel, we did have to rent. Central Mountain Home Sitting said YouTube is a very rough game. Mm -hmm. It's very much like playing Russian roulette, but you have to go and play it every single day, day after day, in order to make progress. So it's like playing Russian roulette, but <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, it's like I, Russian I'm roulette. I'm not sure that Russian roulette is on quite the same plane as YouTube. I mean, maybe. Close what enough. roulette? No, what's right. the one? What's the what's the game with Russian the roulette? roulette? Is where you have a revolver. Oh, that's not the one I mean. Okay, that's not the one I mean. I mean the one the roulette went. table. Is it just roulette? Where you put the marble in the yeah. little spinny thing? Yeah. That's I mean, just kind of guess at what number it is. Not Russian. That's roulette. what YouTube is like. It's like roulette. <laughs> it's like. Um, wow, that went dark quick. Uh, well, I didn't mean Russian. <laughs> sorry. Ari Van Wyke said, love your channel. Thank you. Um, the homemaker said, where will you live in Oklahoma? Will you sell your Idaho property? We, I cannot at this point sell my rocky Idaho property because one of these days there will be no rocks. But we are working on it. Working on you. On what? So so to part ways with your rock pile i love rock patch heaven i love what has been possible speaking of which where's aardvark he's having dinner with family oh okay um thank you drunken one i do need to melt tonight don't let me forget <laughs> keep reminding me because <laughs> i will you, forget <laughs> um wretch said essential mount homestead it can be but julie rocks it well, those things where I think if you're not too emotionally invested, in, if you have other resources coming in and you grow your YouTube channel at your own pace, I think that it can be fantastic. It's when all your eggs are in the YouTube basket that I think that it starts to play games with your mind a little bit when it's your only thing. But if you're doing it at your own pace and you start when you want to and you turn it into what you want it to be, um, I, I think it's a fantastic thing. Um, <laughs> Central Mount Humpson said Little Mountain Ranch. Thank you. Danny Lower Events says you guys rock. Thank that you. could have been another pun, but learning deep mulching from you really helpful. Well, so. People have asked me before, why do I stay in a rock pile? To all intents and purposes, it is a rock quarry. And I mean, if you want to see big rocks, though, you should go see Essential Mountain Homesteading because his 
are like bigger than right but he's got 18 inches of silk too so he gets a little bit of a root he did his well and when he did his um septic, septic system he has these enormous boulders he's pulling out of the ground so i was feeling sorry for myself that i had rocks and he has rocks he had to like make berms around his property because there was so much rock so um but yeah he has about two feet of actual dirt on top of his where i just have rocks and no dirt but it speaks to what permaculture can do when you do the animals when you do all those things you can actually grow your own dirt i mean you can grow your own dirt is huge do you fertilize your own dirt before for planting i don't okay because I don't have any dirt except what's under the mulch. Right. So do we wash the rocks to make dirt? Um, Susan Sullivan said, how are the girls? They're having a lot of fun. They are in their church group a lot. I just got back from a princess group. Subdriver is saying the berms keep the rocks out. <laughs> <laughs> Subdriver, you are on one the last few live shows. <laughs> but it's true. you got to keep those rocks out. Um, it's in the land. Okay, let's see. I'm studying if anyone needs rocks. I got a few. I don't think you can call those rocks. I think they're boulders, honestly. They're beautiful boulders, but they're, oh my gosh, he could create like this they out of can, all these rocks. They are enormous, and there's so many of they them. They can tip a mini excavator. Yeah. Ask, ask me how I know. Yeah. Josh. <laughs> it's beautiful. They've done a beautiful job with it, but holy crap, man. Okay. Worm Farm is doing amazing. It's black gold. My mom has done worm farms before. Usually what I do is I and it grows earthworms and then the ducks come in and eat them. Grandma showed up. Hey. Good to see you. Sandra Clark said, I'll trade your rocks for my mosquitoes. I will not trade that. I will I can fix that with mulch. I can't fix mosquitoes with mulch. But thank you. Erica said were you guys able to buy land in Tulsa no we will be renting and we will be transferring our farmish life here to our farmish life there because I don't do well without a garden and so we will be it sounds like on an acre of land I haven't actually seen it I think I've seen pictures of the old house there but we won't be in that house so I haven't really seen it I don't know we might start in that house we're working on the other house and I thought that one was being rented back to being in? No, the other one that's on the property oh, that's correct. is being rented. But getting the new house over there is becoming quite a chore. Um, so. Ricky Ricardo said, because of your rabbit video, I learned how to kill and prep rabbits. Thank you, Amelia. Well, you're welcome. This last week, I killed... That sounds so horrible to be so excited. Right. I showed my renters how to butcher bunnies, and it was <laughs> so fast and so easy. I do not think that I traumatized anybody. All of the kids helped with the butchering, and I feel like everybody felt like it was a good um, positive, which is what I aim for. When I help people learn how to butcher, I want it to be non-traumatizing to the animal and non-traumatizing to the people I'm teaching. Did Father Renter uh, get to use his knife? He that? did. So. Subdriver said, she starts to twitch when she's garden-free. It's so true. I'm more <laughs> she's than... She's twitching now. I'm twitching now. excitement of talking Just about talking it. about it. Um... <laughs> In Pioneer Way, we talked about what you sent me. So there is her channel, Homesteading the Pioneer Way. Brenda, your link is in the description below. Um, show them. Yes. Yeah. Where is yeah. it? I had it in a safe spot. So Homesteading the Pioneer Way. This is what I said. Build a raised bed out of your rocks. That's a great idea. Where is it? A raised rock bed. It will grow rocks like nobody's business. That's what Brenda raised. from... Uh, homesteading the Pioneer Way sense. So thank you. Progressive homemaker. I do not understand. Why not sell the rocky place? At least that debt. That's a good point. Um, I have all my food systems here. I have built pastures. I have fruit trees in place. I have this much mulch in my backyard so I could grow a garden in there if I needed to. I have my rabbits under my crab apple. I have our smokehouse. Yep. Yeah. And we are five years, this summer, we are five years down the road where everything is working. And so it's making us money because the renters are paying the bills and giving a little extra. 
And if we ever want it back, we just wait till the lease is back. Back. So it is. It is a kind of complicated, difficult answer to give up the homestead and go start a new one. We we bought this place for so little, um, small price, and land prices here are quite high. There are places I would love, like up by the sand dunes. They have black lava no. rock dirt up there. No. My husband doesn't like that area. I would. Sand. Go ahead. Not you're not thinking. I I'm thinking of. No, I know the black. I know the red rose, and that's exactly where you're yeah. at. What the, the problem up there is? It's irrigation there. There is irrigation there because mm -hmm. they flood irrigate. There's pipe. They no, they flood irrigate. Sprinklers. No, they don't have sprinklers. They flood irrigate because I've been up there in, while they're flood irrigating, digging up the apricots. They do have flood irrigation. Uh -huh. It's a miserable desert. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about where I get the apricot pots and the raspberry starts. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's not quite medium. Right. That's, that's okay. Yeah, you know where I'm talking Still, about now, sandy. right? it's sandy. It's sandy. It grows really good potatoes. It's not sand. That's why we're world-renowned for our spuds, but it's, it's sand. It's black. You know where I'm talking about, right? I where I get my raspberries yes, from? Yes, I do. Okay, so they, they, we have lava rock out where we are because we have... Um, we have the hot spots from Yellowstone, you know, the volcanic hot spots. So there are certain places where that basalt has crumbled and has turned into soil and it's black and rich and fertile like what you'd find in Hawaii. We have spots of it in our area and I've gone to these gardens and they're amazing. Um, but John doesn't like the location. So, um, the... Okay, Little Mountain Ranch said, it takes too long to develop a place. It's a lot to consider letting go of. Exactly. We have almost six years into this place now, and the systems all work so that I don't have to put any more money in. It just reproduces itself. All I have to do is water it. And, and then some upkeep. It is still a lot more labor than it would be in a place with better dirt. I don't know that. I, I don't know that. Don't, because... Because I've never plant, I've never gardened in a place that had good dirt. Right. I don't know if if building our own soil is better or not. I have experience. Josh says he needs some raspberry starts, so we'll 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 get you a name and a number. Yes. Um. Let's see. I got up in your area too. Those raspberry starts are made for that dirt. Let's see, did I get through every question? Donna DeMar say she misses the everyday homestead videos. I, I miss making them, but at this point, I'm trying really hard not to do vlog style videos. I'm trying to things up that don't teach you something. I felt like a lot of my videos while we were on the road, foggy, and to make that I felt were interesting, didn't get good views. And so, like, for instance, I have the, the collaboration with Willow Creek Homestead where we did the outdoor shower. But I'm trying not to put parts of that video up. I'm trying to put it all up at the same time. And I'm still finishing the outdoor shower, so I, I don't feel like I can release it till I finish it because actions in her life and on YouTube without putting out a video that's just for entertainment. I want it to have something solid in it. It's not easy to make a video that is like that, at least not for me. Um, so it, it's a process. As The longer I YouTube, the more my ideology about YouTube changes, about what I want to present, about what I want to say about YouTubing is like a lifestyle for us. And the way we YouTube t says something about our lifestyle. And I'm, I'm kind of having to muddle that through in my brain a little bit. Um, Little Mountain Ranch said, we did our first rabbits last week. Our eldest daughter is curing the hides. I think that's fantastic. Are you doing a video of it? Let's see. Sub driver saying, you're going to love just throwing a seed down and watching it grow in good dirt. Yeah, I can't we, imagine we hope, that. We hope to establish that in Tulsa. That would I, be, yeah. I can do that in my backyard because I have so much mulch and dirt. But um, the weeds grow really well there, too. So if we don't have ducks in there to keep it down, it can be a problem. 
Um, Don and Damar said, have you ever come across any of your home, your new homestead people who make char charcoal? My dad just introduced me to the idea. Amazing stuff. Yes. Um, the star Walker project. Um, we just did a video about it a week ago. He makes biochar and he's using it in the walls of his earth ship to help with moisture control, which will be interesting. Charlotte said, I got some wonderful dirt. L I blah. Hello, meaning LOL, but it's not. <laughs> I don't know how to talk in regular English anymore. I got some wonderful dirt. Love my little place. And you love a place? It, one thing that we've talked about lately is it's been sad with subdivisions and everything coming in that some of our best farmland out here that doesn't have rocks in it is just under a parking lot now. And um, so I feel very protective of the soil that I have created. And it's why I was so careful about who I picked as our renters was because I wanted dirt. It's not, it's a heritage. It's a heritage to pass on to somebody else to give them good dirt. Um, it's, it's not neutral. <laughs> you know, it's, to me, it's, it's like a moral obligation said I guess I just thought that because you've been traveling and experimenting with tiny living and now Oklahoma that perhaps you did not want to stay put in Idaho I would love to stay put in Idaho or stay put wherever I stay put I grew up in Idaho I it you know certain situations will always feel like home because you grew up in them and I loved Tulsa I would have loved to have stayed in Tulsa but we needed to come back and fix things up for the renters kind of at, at loose ends when we were in Tulsa, as far as doing with the channel, we didn't know what we were doing with school. And so coming back here for a few months and sitting for a bit and doing some fun videos in a little house, seeing how small we wanted our house to be, all of this, I think, helped us to and de-stress a little bit and just be mellow for a bit. <laughs> is that a good way of putting it that it, it just kind of allowed us to sit and just be for a minute I'm not sure since we got back <laughs> we've been very busy kind of um kind of, kind of find our find your zen well to me it i i felt pretty frantic um, with all the traveling, I hadn't had my fingers in the dirt. I hadn't been around a milk goat. I hadn't milked a goat. I hadn't done anything livestock in so long that I felt very, I had no roots. And so for me, dirt is roots and animals are roots. And so without them, I don't think as clearly and I'm not as driven. So this was necessary, at least for me. Progressive Homemaker said, with all your recent explorations, did you find any great places to get cheap homesteading land? Yes, Georgia was very, very inexpensive. Really, really inexpensive. I think Georgia is the one that really sick. Texas, certain parts of Texas were very, very inexpensive. Um, well, actually, most of the South. What's Alabama? Very, most of the South could have stuff for very cheap. I don't think Alabama was uh, as cheap as Georgia, though. No, I agree. Well, but we also had some amazing, if we could have. Oh, that wasn't the only one. Are you talking about Loretta? Because uh, there were others. Because every state we went through, we looked at Zillow just to kind of get an idea of how much things were. And, this. and we love Georgia. Well, and parts of Texas we love, too. Yeah. So it's it's... Tiffany Payne said, my land is now being built up. It looks like crap. LOL. I miss my, ah, it moves too fast. I miss my mountain view and have to give up my wee three acres and buy again after six years. It is sad, but necessary. It is so hard to pick up and move um, because you do get to start over and it's a huge amount of work and mulch is not cheap. The animals have to be on it for a certain amount of time before it starts to build your soil up. It's not a small undertaking to move to a new homestead. It's, it's, it's and money. Sandra Clark said, what will you do about high school or college for your children? Um, I was homeschooled through high school, and then I had scholarships when I got to college. And so I have absolutely no concerns about whether or not the kids will do fine going from homeschool to college. Thinking that we'll have maybe Paige go to public school this year. <clears throat> she loves being out in social and... Um, we 
starting her in school here since we'll be here for a few more months than John, at least that that's the plan at this point. Um, Cause it's going to take me longer to get the cabin finished and up on Airbnb. That's kind of the plan right now. Been down and grandma's asking, how do you feel about the heat and humidity in the South? It was wonderful in February. It was wonderful really in February <laughs> until I got really, really sick, and then it wasn't so wonderful. When we when we went from Florida into Georgia, I felt like I could take a deep breath again. It when we first got into into Louisiana, that was when we felt the moisture the first time, and we felt like being to us. And then it felt like it lightened up a little bit in Mississippi, and then it lightened up even more in Florida. I think Mississippi was worse than Florida. But when we left Florida and went to Georgia and, ha and had the first really cool night, I hadn't realized just how much humidity was in the air until we got to Georgia at, at, during an, a night time. We really, really, really liked Georgia. From, I mean, literally from the border of Florida, we got in about two miles mm -hmm. and, and just gorgeous all the whole time we were there yeah to and a tiny house convention and the channel that we love that is in georgia is be not slothful they yes. also do rabbit butchering videos but rachel also does a whole bunch of other things she's an amazing homemaker and she is frugal just she blows my mind and right now she's doing whole 30 as like a, a diet thing or something so if you're into that kind of thing stay at home mom magic go see be not slothful um okay. Down. It's quite down there, Peyton. Yeah. Just moving the so so. Let's yeah, see. Tiffany Lori Payton said, uh, "What?" Sorry, sorry Lori family is saying hi to Paige. Oh, good. Hi, T Lori family. Tiffany Pat Payton said, "Subdivisions just ruined the small homestead idea. I think for us, they do, and we have a lot coming in around us, and we're losing our hay fields. The price of hay is going up. Everything goes up, and yet, are not so. putting in as many gardens. I mean." We're going to stop so, with the noise of the stick. Go put it up. It cannot be in here. I know it's super. Did you want to show them? Here. Let me let me so, show them. See? This is Paige's new handicraft. She's using pocket knives to create vicious, horrible, man-eating spears. So, They're to protect us. The, okay, so back to what you were saying. 20 years ago, my grandfather, great-grandpa Dirt, sold his farm of 150 acres. Where um, you've you've seen the granary that the storage is coming out of and everything else, and what happened is that got sold to a whole bunch of developers, and after three or four lines, they started building houses, and now my family's farm, or as I remember, it was just farmland, is now McMansions everywhere, and it's encroaching upon my parents' house to the point where. There, there's no character left. There's no, there's no East Idaho left here. Um, Irvine, California, has moved in. Little Mountain Ranch said we graduated two through through homeschool so far, and it's not been a problem. Yeah, with homeschooling, uh, colleges are happy to have homeschoolers come. We we bring a great dynamic. Most homeschoolers are very respectful of teachers and adults, and have some really, really strange really strange dynamic ideas about what life should be like and we have a tendency to really just follow what our dream is whether it makes sense or not so i think homes colleges are, are really valuing homeschoolers right now <coughs> let's see not normal tree said have you tried fermenting no tools or heat needed yes and um what's the other one uh acto fermenting What's, oh yeah, we make sauerkraut. Right? We do, but what's the um? Oh, oh what, what you do with milk? Yeah, it's lacto fermentation. That's not lacto fermentation. Kefir. Uh, kefir and that kind and of thing. Yogurt. It's um, bacteria, not yeah, not a fungus. Well, um, not a salting process. For when you're making cheese. <laughs> Um, I don't think of every word. Oh, but. Darn it. Let's see. Age, yes, we aging, do. Don't you're see. aging the cheese. No, what's the word for when I'm. <laughs> want me to bring over the. the no, the it's okay. So, you show it to so, yeah, we're making um, a lot of really great milk products from the goat's milk. 
It's amazing. A little bit to heaven. Homestead said, I was hopeful you're going to re relocate to New Mexico when you visited. Wouldn't LOL. We loved New Mexico. Oh my gosh, of all the wonderful places to RV or to somewhere in early fall. Late fall. November, October, November. I thought it was like, was it? Uh -huh. First of November. No, I don't think so because we were with Rebecca at my birthday. Oh. Which was Northern Nevada going towards California, though. Which We'd already we been in New Mexico for two weeks. And then we're back into New Mexico in the end of that. And right, but the first, the first time we went November. through. Right. The first time we went through, I think it was like the end of September. New Mexico's gorgeous. I don't know that I'd want to be there in the summer, but fall time, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Pretty, oh my gosh, we were so in love with New Mexico. Um, don't forget to melt. Thank you so much. What time are we? Seven. Okay, I have I have a few minutes. Um, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Don't let me forget. <laughs> uh, fasciitis. <laughs> is that what it's called? Uh, Progressive Homemaker said, I think the collabs you've been doing and the various tours were great. Thank you. We had, you know, I wouldn't have made it through that trip if we couldn't have stopped at so many people's homesteads and seen what they were doing. It was really hard for me to be away from animals and property. So being able to stop and see what other people were doing. By the way, bar none, all of the people we stayed at had gardens and food storage. It was wonderful. Um, everybody was amazing. And everybody was amazing. It, it was just blissful to see that everybody that was watching it was also walking the walk. They, they would be plunked down in the middle of these other neighborhoods where nobody was growing gardens and nobody was doing anything with food storage. And yet our people were growing gardens and had chickens and were doing food storage. Tiger Lily says hello from Wyoming. Hey, Tiger Lily. Oh, I must what, need to go down. What part, of your, what part of Wyoming are you in by chance? East, west, north, south? <laughs> Everybody's reminding me to melt my goats. Yeah, I have like totally 20 minutes and then I have to go. So, let's see. Okay. So, I have to milk the goats at 7.30. That is the time when I have to milk them. Because my renter has a stomach bug and she needs me to milk for her. I don't think I have enough jugs though. Susan's got to go. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for all your help. Did you want to keep up the show while I go milk, or Tiger should we Lily's close it out? Tiger Lily's in Casper. We should go over to Casper on the way through. That would Since be fun. We're driving through that way on the way to Oklahoma. In. Let's see. Oh, oh so Susan, she, she found her tracking track number. Yep. All I right. have to know with Tiny House Living, do you, how do you store all your equipment? Okay, so that's what the show was about today. Yeah, that's what the, the show example, was about the today. The hydrators, makers, canning, set of freezers. Uh, or do you just not do these things? Well, part so, of the problem is that we don't have electricity right now. So some of those things like the dehydrators won't work. I want to build an outside dehydrator so that it can, for one, be stored outside, but also so I don't need to use electricity. I can bring the pressure cooker here and I can use it and that won't be a problem. But a pressure cooker is huge. So right now we have it in storage and I'm realizing, not I don't know if realizing is the right word, but I am contemplating space I want to give up in order to build um, s shelves and such for these tools or do I want to just bring them out periodically make a whole bunch of food and then go put them back into a storage unit so Tiger Lily is asking if we're coming for the Eclipse um, we live we, at the Eclipse yeah we are gonna get a <laughs> massive front and center and it's going directly well, right over us yeah and it's gonna go right over top of her too so yeah. hey is it a big deal for you guys kind of the way everybody has I mean is there a lot of uh, excitement and emotion and price gouging in your area too or is it just here um, J red 1838 said how are you kids hanging in with being away from home we're actually at home we're living in our own on our own property in a corner of our property and our renters are in our big house and we're in our little house no, and we're in, our tents. we're in our tents and our kids love being on the property and they love being close to family and I don't think they'll ever want to go on the road again they did not enjoy it I think if we had gone out for three weeks and come back they would have loved it but being gone for nine months and then and then and, and some of the stresses associated with that, it, it didn't leave a good impression of traveling on them because it was so long. Um, oh, that wasn't nice. It's okay, I got it. Um, 
Lori got it. Everybody's good. Danny Ball said, you did not announce the live stream in advance this time. I didn't. I forgot to put it up until a couple hours beforehand. Said, do your girls like beads and crafts? I am downsizing my stash and would like to see my craft supplies go to someone who likes crafts. They do love crafts. Um, because we're in a tiny house, I don't, I don't know if it was like a small box. My kids would really love anything like that. Our P.O. box is Dirt Patch Heaven. It's a P.O. box 431, Rigby, R-I-G-B-Y, Idaho, A3442. To have a box of crafting stuff. And after a week, I will love to pick up all the pieces and send it to the second hand store because you know that's what will happen. Um... You've been warned. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Peyton said, Oh, my kids loved it for a couple months at a time. Oh, what does that mean? MAGA and God Bless America. Yes. God Bless America. I don't know what make a, I don't know what that means. Um, Progressive Home Anchor said, Would it be cheaper to sell all the stuff in the stores now and get what you need later? We already did that. Everything that we could sell, we put it, everything that we could sell before we left, we sold. Vehicles, pianos, um, extra pressure cookers, anything that we had that was more than what we could use, we sold it. And now um, what we have would fit into like the smallest storage space you could find. Um, and so we have very little left, just the bare essentials of our tools. Sandra Clark is asking, is the answer on your website? For What's what? the question? What was the question? Or maybe she didn't mean to do it in caps. Oh, MAGA. Okay, Laurie Family Homes that said, Make America Great Again. Thank ah, you. Ah, yes, yes. Thank you, Gregor. Oh, Danny said, I thought you did not announce in advance to get less spammers and it seemed to work. I have no idea. I just, I didn't think of it because we were doing it here at the house instead of at my mom's. So I need to go get started milking. Yeah, the goats are not whining yet. So. Hey, we've been on for an hour. It's okay if I go milk the goats. Yeah, but, you know, Did you want to keep talking? We're talking to our friends. No, because I don't want to be on camera. I got a bad hair day. Okay. If you need anything, email me at dirtpetchheaven at gmail.com. Remember, if one of you needed, if any of you needed a, a baby wrap, it's not for teeny babies. It's more for bigger babies who can support themselves. It's not like not a wrap. Not size, but maybe smaller kayak size and I have it and I won't be using it oh. need it email me dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com okay so Sandra was saying the address is the address is it on our website I don't think so we need to put it on probably probably at Chevin PO box 431 Rigby Idaho A3442 have you guys remember to go check out homesteading the pioneer way and check out Little Mountain Ranch and check out Laurie Family Homestead and Homesteading and Deep South Homestead and everybody and, else. And we love you. And, and you know, yes, everybody. Bye. Everybody.